Hi there, I'm TV Quiz PhD and this is my clock. Right now the time on the clock it is 9.45 plus 6, so it's 9.51 and we'll see very quickly with this yellow light showing that the time is about to change, we'll see that it switches from 9.51 to 9.52. With all of these representing 7, so we have 45 plus 7 is 52. And it's shown down here, each of the blue lights down here indicates the 15 minute period, and this little red light indicates the specific minute. Well, these lights, in order, indicate the hours from 0 to 11 with nothing indicating noon or midnight. We will need, essentially, at first to set up a binary counter, and I'll show you how that works with a simpler model of the clock. But at least you can think of it now for this demonstration as minutes 1, minutes 2, minutes 4, and minutes 8, and when you add all those together, you'd get 15 minutes. The next light would represent 16 minutes. So we'll see in the upper left-hand corner, this timer module, which keeps time by slowly charging a capacitor at the speed given by a resistor, and then slowly discharging that capacitor by the same speed. And that cycle happens in this clock over here. It happens once every minute, but in this clock over here, it could happen at any frequency. We're just really counting numbers here, so. First, we'll see how this clock counts to 15. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we see we have a nine minutes here on the clock, and you can see pretty clearly that's just showing the eight light and the one light together. But yeah, we have these numbers showing the time, and once we add all the lights together, we have the one's place, the two's place, the four's place, and the eight's place, and together that adds up to 15. And once that happens, we need to switch to the next position, which gives 16, and then the light after that is 32, and we add those together, you get 48. And then we start counting at 64 with the next biggest light, and you add the 16 and you get 80. And now we're just tracking the biggest bits here, which are shown in the upper right-hand corner. We count them, we're going to be counting how many bits it takes up to get to 719, which is the last minute that we'll need if we're counting the number of minutes in a 12-hour period. And now you see we have 717, 718, and 719. Once those 15 bits are up, the 16th bit will light up in a normal timer, and you'll get 720. The issue is that this counter keeps going. It doesn't reset after 720, which means that, you know, we're using more bits than necessary, and that's not good because if each of the empty states like this represents the zeroth minute of a day, midnight, it would be way off if we counted every 1024 instead of every 720, like we need to. So I needed to make some modifications to that clock. Those modifications take the 64's bit of the binary number and shuffle it around until it becomes the 60's bit, which results in a sexagesimal system used to count the hours. In this counter, I'll just point out what these integrated circuits are actually doing. Again, on the left, you have the timer unit, which just keeps the time, lighting that blue light up every so often at a fixed interval. And then underneath the LEDs, you have the integrated circuits that keep the state clock, or keep the counter, or keep the time in 4-bit shift registers. And you have three 4-bits, so you have 12 bits, which is enough. So we actually use 11 of the 12 bits in the full clock. Similarly to the 4-bit shift registers, we have 4-bit adders below them. They don't have any sense of time. They will just do exactly the same thing. They'll take their inputs and immediately add them, no matter what inputs they're given. So that's why we need the registers, which are controlled by the timer, to update their value and allow new information to pass every so often, or every minute in this case. And I'll show how the other clock works over there, just how the circuit diagram is set up to allow me to count minutes one, minutes two, minutes four, and minutes eight, and then the next one, minutes 15. If you imagine the 15s bit is the starting place, the next bit is a 30s bit, and then the next bit is a 60s bit. And the next bit is two hours, and the next bit is four hours, and the next bit is eight hours. So it works. We can count minutes and hours on the same timer just by making that one change of leaping from a 16s counter down to a 15s counter. So when I researched this project, I was taught that the clock signal from the timer should be used as the clock for all three registers. And then for the adders, they carry out from the first adder should go to the carry-in of the second adder. Similarly, the carry-out of the second adder goes to the carry-in of the third adder. And that's how I'd set it up originally. And I tried a lot of 
different ideas for how to get this 16th place to be equal to the 15th place. Okay, take a look at the whole schematic and see if you can see where I make a change to let the 16th place become a 15th place. We'll zoom in at the 4-bit adder, the first one. And we'll look at the carry out signal. Now that carry out signal goes up, down, and around to the next 4-bit shift register. It's used as the clock signal for the 4-bit shift register, and that allows each shift register to proceed with its own clock. The first shift register counts every minute, and the second shift register counts every 15 minutes. The next bit becomes a half hour and the next an hour to start the sexagesimal count. And then we see as soon as the addition would be 16, the carry bit will turn on, meaning that this light turns on to become 15. So now at 11.57, I'm going to go into a brief explanation of why these registers all work as they do. We have 12 on display. Pretty soon it'll be 13. The very last thing that can be on display here is 14, so keep an eye out for that when this, this, and this light are eventually on. We haven't allowed 15, because as soon as 15 comes into the adder, the carry bit is going to go off, which drives the next adder, and refreshes this register. So keep in mind that we're about to see this now transition from 13 here to 14, and that's the very highest value that can be displayed on this clock, 11.59 a.m. This adder turns at every clock signal, this adder turns every time the overflow bit is about to go on, and then this adder turns, as it just did now, every time the overflow bit is about to go off. And we're left going from 11.59 a.m., which was with this light, to noon, which is no lights on, the zeroth minute of p.m. So I welcome you all to afternoon, and I hope you have a nice one. Now I'll show you the full schematic. This part represents the display showing the minutes in 15 minutes. This part represents the shift registers and the adders, as well as the timer circuit and the A-stable 555 oscillator, which is here. Alright, well, look at my other videos on 555 oscillators, and uh, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure to share this bit of work that I've done with you all. Looks like that's a signal that it's time to like and subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching indeed.